so here we are again we're gonna be line, going down this hole this is 100% you could say the largest stone mine here in Lancashire yeah definitely in the valley definitely. of Rossendale yeah, that's right. in the valley of stone it's got to be what sets it apart obviously is how complex this mine is as we have seen on previous recordings uh, of this mine you know is very extensive you can very easily get lost here my friend Dave and myself we have been several times down this mine on several trips over the years so we are getting quite familiar I think yeah, with I this place so. with the complexity uh, and the diversity of uh, passages that there is uh, yet there's a lot to be discovered uh, as uh, Paul found out on his last video please check his channel uh, you will find the link of his channel, Dave's channel, Overground, Underground, in the description. We're not going to be recording uh, everything from the beginning because a lot of the beginning is in previous videos. So check uh, the links to those previous videos. And it's absolutely freezing out here. Uh, I can't feel I can't even talk. My, friend is my brain is frazzled. <laughs> <laughs> and we are, we are doing one test. This was Dave's idea, by the way. And he's te testing the temperature outside, as you can see, it's freezing cold out here. And comparing with the temperature in inside, what reading have we got now? We've got uh, minus 0 0.3. So, it's the, it's the outside temperature. As you can see, it's outside temperature, minus 0 0.3, outside temperature. Yeah. Uh, once the thermometer has adjusted to the underground temperature, we're going to take it again. And we're going to compare mines are known are known to have almost the same temperature uh, all year round i have been in the hottest uh, day of the year two years ago and it was nice and breezy outside now it's now nice and warm inside uh here in the mine compared to outside so we're going to take the temperature and we're going to share it with you guys let's go in let's go in yeah yeah no more talking <laughs> let's get walking <laughs> <laughs> so we are we've made a we've made our way in uh here dave and myself along a blue line that takes you uh on the right direction that we want to follow and we have intersected on the map e drive which has been following uh along a wide line for a certain distance so we got this marker here e12 and we have CRO uh, and the F uh, letters, so another uh, way it goes that way. CRO stands for Cave Rescue Operation. And uh, as we said before on a video, uh, three young men here in uh, October uh, 1980 came with uh, just candles and, and I think just a, a little torch uh, that wouldn't have the power that it has our torches nowadays they came here to navigate along this maze of tunnels and they got themselves lost now the alarm was raised and a cave rescue team came here in order for them not to lose themselves they left all these markers because it would be catastrophic for the rescues themselves to get themselves lost but as it was they found a young man in an area called the z area they're going to see here on the map on the top left hand corner map and the exact point where they were found is marked on the map as well. And that's where we're going to be heading. But for the reference, obviously, we're in E12 now. And we have following this roadway. And it keeps going for a fair distance. So hopefully it'll take us to the Z area where we want to be the far end of this mine, which is, uh, is a good distance away. And Paul was noting here... Yes. What do you think this is, Paul? Dave. Paul, Dave. <laughs> I call you Paul, your brother's Paul. Call you. Dave, what do you think this is? Well, it's obviously a tree trunk, isn't it? It's been laid on the ground first. Yeah, it's a tree trunk that is going across. It's almost like creating a, a false floor, you could say. I think what's happened here, and you were saying on your previous video, that uh, there's been a subsidian, some sort of subsidian here on this level, and they used uh, the tree trunks to reinforce it. And obviously they needed some hefty tree trunks, as, as you can see the size of them, they're quite wide, and they, they, they're wider than 
12 10 inches I would say uh, the diameter and because there was rails going across and heavy mine carts with all the load of stone they needed to support all that weight and hence the size of these tree trunks I mean God knows they probably go quite a fair distance this way and that way but it's fascinating to see what they've done here mm, I've never seen that before in a mine no no I've uh, I've never seen it quite like this to be honest yeah there is uh, yeah. there is quite a gap there is there I mean it goes a few feet there so it's, it's hard to it's, say if it's not subsidence I'd be blasted down too far when this tree yeah. area right has the storm been a bit softer in this area? They might have. They might have blasted a bit uh, too too far back, accidentally. Yeah. And then they have the problem of levelling the, the roadway back up then. Yeah. Yeah, this certainly would have uh, solved that problem of yeah. levelling the roadway. It clearly does the job here. There's the roadway, the roadway going on. Or is this out? Every rail put down in here. Yeah. And then it's, it's filled in with material on top of me. You never see it unless it gets... It's washed away or? Could be. So the white line definitely yeah. is giving us the way. Obviously, we had to deviate from the white line a bit following the roadway, but we clearly know that the main haulage way, the main roadway is uh, pointing the way back. And we have found the next marker that is giving us away that we're on the right tracks and this is 31 a plus that's where we are right now so looks like we're on the right directions that looks like a really nice crazy paving driveway yeah Yeah, it looks uh, it looks like um, you know a, a paved sort of <laughs> patio, or, patio something. or something like that. It just uh, broken into pieces, and we have a nice roadway there, Paul. I yeah, think yeah. I keep. <laughs> why do I keep pulling you calling know. you Paul? <laughs> do I miss your brother somehow? <laughs> <laughs> I'm terrible for names. It's Dave. Okay, 31A+. plus. So we need to get to 38A+, plus before we start going to the Yeah. Line. It's looking good, we've got a nice clear roadways and it seems to go around the corner there, to the left. I tell you what, I'm getting warm now. I'm getting really toasty and that's the way we came from you can see on one of the original beams across they would have supported quite a lot of the roof that now does now collapse underneath and some bits of rail here the direction we're going at the moment that's not oh, I mean that might be well, on the cave rescue map, yeah, because that is roadway. Is that another roadway though? I know this is a direction because we've got 32 today plus. Have car. we? Have we got 32? Yeah. yeah. So we got 32 a plus. Uh, the original map and just on we the can see. Right. You can look on the top left-hand corner of the map. This is the original markers from the cave rescue operation. 32 a plus. You can see, and. Uh, Dave, uh, very kindly, he's marked it a bit, a bit clearer, so there's no way we're going to get lost here. We've I got think, the markers. I think, we're, I think we're doing well now. We're following the string, you know, we know where we're up to, do we? This will take us all the way to 38A plus where we need to be. 38A plus, fantastic. And we are following, as you can see, an old uh, uh, quarryman roadway that Obviously a lot of a lot of it has come down, but this would have been a clear roadway where carts would have been going up and down with heavy slabs of the stone. 
right so so the line follows which is good because we say we are following the line are we yeah so no need for extra markers here okay we follow the line and look at that 34 a plus there i can see so the string is taking us on the right tracks we're on 34 a plus and this white string obviously is following on the right tracks as well which is what we want a little bit of a rail stop there 34 a plus i wonder where the original marker is on a, on a that's pillar. the original marker yeah. like on a totem <laughs> 34 a plus pb i'm not sure what pb that'd be the initials of probably the the person who wrote that yeah i would imagine if anybody's watching this and was part of the cave rescue operation or know what pb was the stand for what initials it stands for please leave it in comments it'd be very interesting to find out the history behind the actual heroes that managed to get the young men out alive so that initial p is further on in the mind as well from this absolute maze 34 35 a plus yeah and then 36, quite a few near. What we got? 36. So we're only a couple of uh, markers away now. From 36. Where... A plus. Yeah. So we're on the right tracks to the set. Yeah. Line that we want. Interesting. Oh, wow. I've never seen this before. Well, I don't remember. So that is obviously going across to another head. Yeah, to another stemple. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if it's just broke or whether the weight of it is is bent that in that direction. There is a, there is a split in it. It's kind of a, a split, which would make more sense. Yeah, because that would be very. But very this was going bend. definitely across and tried to prevent from a lot of this roof collapsing, which, as we can see, there's so much collapse over the years. But you can see this weight in every direction. That you could easily get lost. But luckily we have uh, the markers from the cave rescue operation. We have uh, the the line that we are following. A bit, a bit of a safe line like divers use really. Yeah, it's a very nice line to follow that. Yeah. And that's what you want. You want to have the certainty that you're not lost and that you know your way out if you need to. Okay, so we've got the line going in that direction, but we've got 37 here plus to the and then just beyond, just beyond is 38A plus. And this is what we need to just slightly deviate off that white line for a second. Now. So is this the way you went? Yeah, yeah. Right, okay, so we're going to mark a line here then, okay? Yeah. So, we're going to be taking a rest here. And uh, we've marked a, a bit of a safe exit where there wasn't any lines uh obviously we we got those uh arrow markers which they have been very reliable so far and these pointy markers with an arrow uh, according to what dave has told us and if you check on his videos you will see that goes towards one of the cranes the only crane i would say on the ground that's ever been found in any quarry in the north or in the Lancashire area I would say so it's going to be something very special that we're going to be seeing hopefully we're going to be getting there today on this video so stay stay tuned and just for reference I'm going to show uh, on the top left hand corner map where we are in the cave rescue operation the marker 38 a plus that's where we are so check it out on the map and you'll see how far we've come from the entrance that is also marked on the map right let's have a little break a bit of chocolate yeah a bit of chocolate yeah something to drink yeah so 
uh, we are going to check also on the temperature that we have here on the ground. We came in at minus minus 0 0.3 mi minus 0 0.3 and now we're on 8.9 so nearly 10 degrees difference how much warmer is on the ground you know that explains like why on the ground spaces are huge are used for storage of wine cheese like uh, a lot of the uh, stone mines in the south in Wiltshire a lot of the caves as well are the same they, they remain on the constant temperature and a certain de degree of uh, humidity It'd be interesting to check if the humidity changes here, but I would imagine if the temperature doesn't change, there's no reason why it should change the humidity. Well, on another trip, I have got a humidity meter. Yeah. I could bring and check what the humidity yeah. inside and outside is. Yeah. That would be interesting. And check the summer temperatures at some point. Yeah. So we can do some scientific measurements, actually. Of, of... Wow. That was just a... Partial collapse then in the background. <laughs> That's that. Do you hear that, guys? Uh, I think that that was not from the roof. That could have been from where we yeah, were stepping on and destabilized. But I wouldn't want to be here on a full collapse. <laughs> It'd be terrifying. I'm sure it would hear like a little earthquake. But anyway, we're going to be yeah checking the humidity next time. I am going to be purchasing also uh, uh, a radiation counter, a Geiger, a Geiger counter to check if there's actually any radiation as well down here will be interesting. So there's a lot of scientific measurements that we can be doing that uh, will be good for future reference. Yeah, just yeah. to get the perspective. Oh my God, this is crazy. We've been, we've been, we've been bypassing some of the cave rescue operation markers from the point that we were taking a rest, which is somewhere down there. You can see on the top left hand corner map where we were taking the rest and you can see the the lines that uh, we've gone up to a bit away from the cave rescue operation maps hopefully shortcutting to the z markers much quicker than zigzagging all the way around and got down here there's very very few people that are walking as you can see everything that you're kind of standing on is is moving uh, very easily to slide on uh, on all the stuff and we come across this feature which is absolutely fascinating to see now we gotta guess whether obviously this this kind of a stemple but what is this it has a hole so it must have had something pivoting do you think it was it was holding an arm for a crane. Could it either be that or is it joined two beams together where they've had such a long span they can't span? Oh yeah, sort of uh, sort of bridging the beam yeah. when it was too long. If anybody has an idea what this what might have been for, please leave it in comments. Any any extra knowledge on this video is gonna be there's very, metal, very valuable. There's metal supports in there, so there's bolts going through that. Yeah, this is metal and this is wood. Oh, so interesting this. Right, which which way? So we follow it under this. We, we're following this. the green line, are we? All right, yeah. Still? Yeah, you're right. Well, wherever it goes, the green line, where does it go? Uh, we need to pick up on some really strong, good, prominent arrows over towards our left hand side. And the green line disappears here. Right, so, so we're going to have to lay some more green line. This piece. Oh my god, look at that beam there across. Yeah. All this holding still. Yeah, well we went under there last time. <laughs> and then we picked up on some arrows in that direction. Okay, I'll let you start walking, but don't lose sight of me. Yeah. And I'm going to... I'll skate in this direction. I'm going to mark yeah. the... the yeah, have a quick scout and tell us if we're on the wrong way. I'm going to wait here for your reply, so... Okay. Come back to me, don't disappear, okay? Yeah. okay. It's, it's kind of frightening this place to think you take the wrong turn with any sense of direction and you're way way out of sync actually there's some markers there wow that's interesting i'm going to take a look at it closer there is some carvings here from the old mine it's got to be it's got a t and 20. i wonder what was this about where they're trying to number Maybe different areas of the mine. If anybody has an idea what this might mean, 
uh, please leave it in comments. That uh, looks rather interesting. Never seen anything like this in this mine before, these sort of carvings. Dave? Are you alright? Right, come back to me. Here? Yeah. Light you, light, shine your light. All right, so that's the way I gotta follow. Is that the way? It's not ringing any bells, but let's, uh, let's just have a look over towards your left. See the sort of stuff that we walking on here. Guys, it's so precarious, some of it. Right, this is, no, this is mostly running and it goes over there, but that's the direction you were. Yeah, okay, well let's go in that direction then. Because there is more green string over there. There's more green string? Yeah, it's very confusing. So you're on the right green string. So that's why we're doing good just marking the steps back, you know, because yeah. The last thing here is we want to follow the wrong green string. God knows where it takes you. Right, I'm gonna go off camera and mark uh, the mark this path, okay? Well, we've been uh, scrambling for a, scrambling for a bit and following another green line. And Paul, I mean Dave, thinks we're on the right tracks. As we can see some of the markers that he recognizes them arrows yeah white arrows they're pointing their way into the crane are they I think so yeah let's do it then what we were last and time. we are following the green line so there's pretty confidence that we're gonna be seeing the crane today so stay tuned you don't want to be be missing this out this is an absolute maze. Collapse over there. Level going off there. Level going off to the left. But it's all very precarious. This and rarely been trodden. So we've got to be very careful really not to slip up and hurt ourselves and walking on any of this. Wow. We're on the right tracks. Oh. So slippery this as well. As Dave says, it's almost kind of greasy. I remember that I on your I video. Remember. I do. Yeah? Yeah. I remember. So we come down a roadway. You can't tell it's a roadway. Well, you can. But there's so much collapse that's come down there. Right. This is good reason to be to getting our hopes up collapse there and this would have been another roadway I'm guessing and yeah all this there would have been roadways really okay yeah so we've still got the arrows to follow have we got the green string the green still string. green string yeah. uh, still going it's always good when you navigate into a place look the way look backwards because when you go in a, a maze like this I mean, it's hard to recognize a lot of stuff because it looks all the same, but it's good to look back to refresh the memory the way back, but we have been following the string. Yes, now this is the rail I mentioned earlier that was looking for on the ground. We've got a rail there and a rail just to my right. Wow. It, yeah. 100% we're on the right track here. We're on the right way, guys. Yeah reason to celebrate we got a railway there we got a lot of rail here there's just laying there rusting away look at this i'm guessing there's been up, up higher supports yeah yeah they would have been used yeah. to supports for a lot of this that's come down i mean you can see all the timbers that have fallen there look at this there's very few people that come down here very few Wow, 
I'm so pleased. There's a lot of exploring to do just around this area, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And God knows where you could find, you know, it's, yeah. it's a lot of detail that you could be missing just uh, by not going around the corner. Okay, let's follow the string. Our road's in that direction. So we, are we following the green string? Oh. I think so, yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, yes, that that uh, pointy arrow with a question mark is not very reassuring that. No. We're not going to follow them, we're going to stick to the green string. I think ultimately it brings us along where the green string is going to take us anyway. No, look at this. It goes in every direction. Yeah. We've just got a bit of a... It's madness. Precarious climb down here. Yeah, take your time. Put some open, you've got them over it. So guys, this is uh, incredible. We had to stop for a little break and charge up the batteries, but on the end of the green line, and we're following those markers, we have found a very interesting thing here. We have found some of the very old, rusty, compressed air pipes that we have been using back in the late 1800s, early 1900s periods. I'm pretty sure they compressed air pipes, just judging by the thickness of them. And it's kind of, it's got kind of a, oh, a little wooden, uh, wooden thing to close it there. Huh. <laughs> That's cool. Well, we've never seen that. Yeah. Little, uh, little bong, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so, so this tells me that in the later period of this mine, they would have had compressed air drills uh, you know, just drilling away at the rock seam and uh, and and making their way into the good into the good bedding of the rock that they would have structured in in different sections, as you can see here, different beddings. And uh, base for we got it gets even better. This guys, base for a crane. Yes, yeah. this is the base for a crane, hundred percent. Really you can tell, so there was a crane sat here, yeah. and there's a chain, yeah. there's a chain going round it, so, wow, and the top is gone, but there would have been a, a, a top you equivalent. Just about see a little dimple on the top of the... You think that was it? Maybe, hmm. maybe, but look at that, the curve. But the most fascinating thing, or one of the most curious things we have come across, is this long cross sets of stemples that are resting on some rocks and on this temple that's about to follow it, it looks like a classic death trap this does <laughs> yeah. it yeah wow just uh, just get below just for perspective yeah so here we've got dave just below to give a bit of a sense of dimension of this that is madness We are going to be definitely finding the crane. Oh, look, these are some of the miners. No, I thought it was a number two, but I have seen some carving before. Pickhead. Pickhead. It has been taken, obviously. I mean, I've got a shovel at the back of the Yeah, but we have uh, some other. Oh, here we go. Here's the rails. This is the start of the railed level here, which is absolutely magnificent, as you can see. And it goes off in the distance. We're gonna follow in it, following this, the green string. Let's go. Be my guest, you go ahead. Shovel. Oh, big shovels, eh? And the rail with the slippers across below the rails. Judging by the width of these rails, obviously the minecarts must have been huge. Big minecarts, and obviously they needed the big minecarts to, you know, to carry all the, all the stone. It looks very running there, but it keeps going pretty much in every direction as we can see. 